Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. So, as some of you may or may not know, I run a podcast with my good friend Corey called Tap Calf Transmissions. It's essentially a mostly Star Wars book club. We do sometimes cover other material, but we've read dozens of Star Wars books, mostly legends, but also canon as well. Right now, we're going through the new Jedi Order, the Yuuzhan Vong series, so if you're interested in that, I'll link it down in the description. But I bring this point up because... I consider myself to be a fairly well-read Star Wars fan. The podcast has a couple of really nice benefits. For one, it helps provide a defense for the, oh, you just read the Star Wars wiki comments that YouTubers often, let's be fair, rightfully get. But for two, it also keeps me up to date on most Star Wars novels. That includes The High Republic. And I just finished reading the first book of The High Republic's Phase 3, which is called Star Wars The Eye of darkness. Now, I was sort of mixed on the High Republic Phase 1. I read all the adult books. I thought they ranged from not great to pretty good, with most sort of falling in the middle. You can actually see the rankings we give to every book we read, both Corey and I, on our Tapcast tier list. Tapcast tier list, that's hard to say. But I gotta admit, I kind of fell off after Phase 1. They did a weird thing. So the High Republic, and I'm going to try to make this video so everyone can watch it, even if you're not familiar with the books, although there will be spoilers, is split up into three different phases. Phase one is sort of the introduction to the era. It starts off with the great hyperspace disaster. It introduces really two main enemies, the Nihil and the Drengear, with the Nihil certainly being the more prominent. Then in phase two, they actually made what I thought was a really terrible decision and moved back into the past. Like the High Republic phase one, already a couple hundred years before the prequels. Phase two is over a hundred years before that. And the strongest aspect, I think, of phase one was the characters. There were really a couple of standouts for me, Elzar Man in particular. So phase two being a jump back in time really made no sense to me. And it ended up turning out that as admitted sort of by publishing, you can jump right from phase one to phase three. So that is what I did. I talked to people kind of get caught up on what I missed, watch some videos from Star Wars Explained and others, and I felt pretty comfortable about it all. However, I've got to say, I've just come to realize that this era probably isn't for me. These books aren't for me. I fully understand why people like them, but as I'm reading through The Eye of Darkness, there's just, I'm not finding a whole lot that's compelling. So as I mentioned, the whole idea of the era is that the Republic is at its zenith. It's protected by the Jedi. There's not really much of a standing military, as is of course the case before the prequels. And that's good as an idea, but in execution, I just find everything about the High Republic has started to really fall flat. So phase one, as I mentioned, started off with the introduction of the enemy known as the Nihil, as led by Markion Roe. Whereas the High Republic at this point is basically the goody two-shoes of Star Wars governments, the Nihil are the complete opposite. They're basically anarchist space marauders. And I found that worked all right for the first book where they're causing havoc and blowing things up in hyperspace and performing acts of terrorism. But I remember way back early on, and I believe this was echoed by some of the authors thinking there's no way that the Nihil can be the main threat of the era because they're far too shallow. And yeah, that's continued to be the case. We're now on phase three, over a dozen books, everything considered, between junior and adult, and the Nihil are still the main enemies of the Republic, and the scale of the conflict has just gotten inflated to a stupid degree. So again, spoiler warning for the newest book, it takes place a year after the final book of phase one. The Nihil which again are this group of marauders, have essentially secured control over a portion of space through the galaxy in what is honestly a completely nonsensical way. They have what's called the Storm Wall, which is a barrier separating Nihil space from Republic space. Nihil space, of course, is just an area that they took as their own. And this Storm Wall is made by technology, which makes travel through it completely impossible. It's also self-repairing. It destroys anything that runs into it. And then within the storm wall itself, within Nihil space, you also can't really move around because they have like these automated drones which will track you down anywhere. Only the Nihil's path drive can travel through the storm wall or within Nihil space without being destroyed essentially. And if that feels contrived, it's about a hundred times worse when you read the book. The storm wall is really the focus of the Eye of Darkness. The space that the Nihil occupy is called the Occlusion Zone and it has the effect of making the storm 
Star Wars galaxy seem really, really small? Why can't they just destroy the occlusion zone or destroy the storm wall rather? Well, because it's self-repairing. We see the Republic try to do so towards the end of the book where they mass a fleet of like 60 starfighter grade ships. It's also another one of my problems. If you like space combat, there's pretty much nothing in the High Republic for you. The strategy they have to take down the storm wall doesn't make sense and the idea of the storm wall as well is just complete nonsense. So they can't penetrate the storm wall because if they destroy one of the storm seeds, which is basically the small pieces of technology which generates the storm wall, another will move in and shift the wall to take its place. The thing is, why not just continue doing that? They park a fleet outside and they destroy seven or eight. It repairs itself and they give up. But this is a galaxy which has millions of planets. Republic fleets at this point are made up of basically donated ships. It's it's just, it's nonsense and it's contrived. And then within the storm wall, it makes even less sense. Like the Nihil are occupying several sectors worth of space. They can't even feed people, but we're supposed to believe that they can somehow squash all rebellions, that there are no fleets within this area that can stand up to them. This is at a time, again, when there is no central Republic force, when sectors and systems are responsible for their own defense. The Nihil go from being basically in hiding to controlling vast swaths of the galaxy, and at the end of the novel, after the Republic fails to defeat them, they actually expand the storm wall significantly, taking in major planets, including, as noted, Sullust, Utapau, Ryloth, Malastare, and Sluis Van. There's a great canon galaxy map by Darth Syphilis that I'm going to include on screen, and I'll also link to it down below. The book actually had to go through a few changes because the size of the wall and the zone didn't necessarily make sense, but at the very minimum, if we consider Ryloth, and Ariadu being two edges of the zone. We know at least Ryloth was contained. It sort of stopped at Ariadu. This is how big of a space they now have. The galaxy is just so, so small. Nobody can do anything besides the Republic, who themselves don't have a military. So really, the entire series so far feels like it's been the Jedi thinking about wanting to fight the Nihil, them having a few starfighters, and that's pretty much it. But, I mean, that's world-building issues, sort of conflict-scale issues. Star Wars has had those issues forever, both in Legends and Canon, although not usually this egregious. The bigger issue with the Nihil is that they're just not interesting. And I posted on Twitter that the issue with the Nihil in the Republic is that it's too black and white of a conflict. And people responded, I think, fairly that Star Wars is always pretty black and white. There's always the Jedi and the Sith or the Rebels and the Empire. It's usually pretty clear who's the good guys and who's the bad guys. The issue with the High Republic is that that idea is being stretched to a nearly comical level. The Jedi and the Republic spend 95% of the time in these novels, especially the most recent ones, being goody two-shoes. Like, I, I know that's a kind of a childish way to address it, but that's how they are. It's like, half the book is people being driven to tears by not being able to help everyone that they want to. And I understand that the Jedi are supposed to be good, and the Republic in this era is supposed to be good, but it just feels like constant congratulations over how good they are. Two fairly egregious cases of this, in my opinion, on my recent reread that I noticed come from Elzar Man. So the Jedi Grand Master is killed. Elzar is basically urging the council to take action, but before he meets with them, he has an internal monologue where he recognizes the importance of discussion and that although his opinion is that action should be taken, all opinions are valid and he's no more right than anyone else. Just reminding us that this character, who's actually had a brush with the dark side, still is ready to uphold the values of democracy. It's just lame. We also get Belzettifar he also lost his master. He's forgotten about that and spends the entire book basically upset he can't help more people. Then at the end, he almost does something interesting and puts his ship in the Nile exclusion zone as it's expanding, but he doesn't. But I mean, worse than that is the Nihil themselves. Well, the Republic is, you know, boring. The Nihil are nonsensical. With the Empire, you can understand how a fascist state would come into being and produce these monsters. The Nihil, on the other hand, there's no way you can even imagine imagine a real allure to joining the Nihil. Like, they're barbarians, they don't live past 30, they believe in chaos for chaos's sake, and that's just not a compelling motivation, I think, and it's not realistic. Like, with the Sith, although they're sort of into the same thing, more so power, you can at least understand how basic human emotions like jealousy and greed would drive to taking these shortcuts and falling to the dark side. With the Nihil, it's like, we're spending half the book talking about them ripping each other's eyes out and stuff just to show how badass 
badass and edgy they are. Like, they're always listening to rock music. They paint skulls on their stuff. It's like, these guys cannot carry a full series. They just can't. They're not interesting because no reasonable person would join the Nihil. Like, compare that with Yolaren, who we think is a good guy, but we see how he buys into the Empire and becomes evil. With the Nihil, that's not possible because you're either like some dumb grunt with a suicide wish or you're not into it. Like, there's even a character, a senator, who leaves the Republic to join the Nihil for more power, but that's not even believable because it's like, what are you ruling over? Just feels like this era has so much potential, but they've really gone out of their way to make it not interesting. I think it all started really the issues with the lack of a bigger time jump. They set this less than three centuries before the prequels. It needed to be set back further, probably a thousand years. The Sith should be gone, but right now it's like nothing really major can happen that's galaxy shaking because the prequels have to come along in a few hundred years and we know things are pretty much the same though the jedi have degraded a little bit the republic institutions have degraded but that's not even something that we've seen take place the republic is still held up as this shining beacon and any sort of cracks are a result of outside pressure i think it'd be more interesting if they took the series and for example had the republic split on how to deal with the nihil threat i think back to the new jedi order when they're fighting the yuzhan vong there's a division between luke skywalker and his adherents and kip duron and his where the latter wants to take aggressive un-Jedi action against the Yuzhan Vong, including first strikes. I think it would have been very interesting to see the Republic basically break 800 years of peace or more. I don't think we know the exact dates in canon yet and fully militarize, or at least that's what a portion of the Senate wants to do. But right now, the Republic's led by Lena So, who again, goody two-shoes, not very interesting. Like, the Nihil threat, I guess, is going to cause the degradation into the Clone Wars era, but it's just, it's dumb. Like, it's just dumb. And the benefit of the time jump is that you get a few Jedi Masters like Yarl, Poof, and Yoda who are around back then, but they're hardly used. I don't think it's a real benefit. The era is just not for me. The setup's not compelling. The books generally suffer from introducing too many uninteresting characters where there's several who are really good. I like Elzar Man, even though he's got some characterization issues like I discussed, but those are my thoughts. Again, if you want to see a longer discussion with myself, Corey, and also our special guest Ilkin from Kings and Generals, check out the Tapcalf Transmissions podcast. If you don't like canon, we cover a ton of Legends books. Next week, we're doing a Jedi Prince novel, then we're back to the New Jedi Order. Regarding my sort of future involvement with the High Republic, I probably will continue to read the major novels for the podcast. We're probably due for two or maybe three more adult novels to finish off the era, but if we don't do them for the podcast, I probably won't read them. I doubt I'll read any of the junior novels, and I certainly won't with my own free will. But that's all for today, guys. Enjoy. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.